never in the history of British athletics has a long distance runner had such support. Lovely see we in second place, Aguida there, Legat coming wide, he got tripped though, and Mo Farah's coming down the straightway, and he's going to be attacked by, by Gebra Meskel, and Mo Farah's got the double! He's the Olympic champion again, Gebra Meskel gets the silver medal, Mo Farah is the Olympic 10,000 metre champion, he's the Olympic 5,000 metre champion, he is a man of the moment, and Great Britain have another gold. A sensational run by Mo Farah. I'm forever blow when bubbles, pretty bubbles in the air. They fly so high, nearly reach the sky, and like my dreams, they fade and die. <laughs> I think confused is a very good uh, description of where we are at the moment. Obviously, West Ham have got the contract to occupy Olympic Stadium, and we lost out in the tender process. Uh, we've subsequently gone back and said, OK, forget the tender process. You've got a national taxpayer-funded asset that you have an obligation to maximise for the benefit of the taxpayer. And therefore, we're asking you, what rent do you want us to pay to occupy? So the ball's in their court. Their excuse at the moment for not answering that is that they're currently um, exploring which operator will manage the Olympic Stadium. That decision won't be made until October, and they'd rather defer the thought of extra tenancies, extra lease arrangements until then. So that's an interesting development because that puts them in a corner. They have to give us a price if the stadium is underused, which I believe it will be very much underused because with the O2 around the corner for the indoor shows, with Wembley pitching low price deals uh, for virtually anything to survive, there's not an awful lot left over for the Olympic Stadium. Uh, our leader, Boris Johnson from London, obviously believes that he's going to have a rock concert there every day. Well, perhaps Boris hasn't seen too much about rock concerts yet. But that, that, the reality, when it hits, the reality hits that they will have an enormous amount of spare capacity. I think then we become a very viable tenant. Well, it is difficult, but, you know, time moves on and the ground now is, you know, you know it's, it's, it's very, very built up around there. Parking's impossible. You know, it's, the stadium can only, if the, if the club's going to push you on, it's, it's, it's sad to leave and see them leaving Upton Park for sure. You know, all, all our memories of growing up there and playing on the four quarters of, you know, when we were 15, 16, first team player even, you know, I, I look back, you know, you, you think of the days there with Bobby and all the players that were there. Um, but time moves on, a new stadium, it, it'll be a great move, I'm sure, in the long term, they, they, they'll be able to attract bigger crowds and take the club forward and take it even, you know, you need, you need fans bums on seats to, to if you're going to attract top players you need big stadiums so hopefully that's, it can be a big success for West Ham Ideally uh, I'd like to follow the European example um, and the European example is obviously big clubs sharing with small clubs you know the world we're operating in a recession market people want more value for money less customers more choices we all have to think outside the box of how we can run a business more efficiently and effectively and quite clearly for us, on a several different grounds, it makes a huge amount of common sense for us to share the Olympic Stadium. Common sense is a word a lot of people use and very few follow. And football seems to be devoid most of the time of common sense. You know, we live in this age of enormous salaries. Why? I don't know. Uh, why do we pay all this money out to these superstars? We live in the age of perhaps ignoring the ordinary supporter more in favour of the corporate supporter. All of these things lack common sense. Well, common sense says if you've got a £600 million taxpayers funded asset, then you better use that stadium every day to try and get a return to the taxpayer. And on that basis, that's our strongest argument now for going forward. And we do have support in the House of Commons and the House of Lords for people saying, one, this makes sense for the taxpayer. Two, what do the words Olympic legacy really mean? 
Is Olympic legacy purely funding a massive multi-million pound turnover Premier League club or is it the broader sense of saying what really benefits the community? We tick boxes that other people don't tick. So whilst it's been a long and expensive process, I'm glad we fought the fault, we've taken the fight to the authorities, we've not been just brushed aside, which I think most people thought we would be, and we're still in the mix. A lot of my mates from Kennington, well, I'm still in touch with now. We're still pals, and we, we go out at Christmas time, and we have a few meetings in, in, in the during during the during the year. They're all West Ham mad still now. They still go, and they, and uh, you know, it's just like this, it's it's in, embedded in you really. It's just they're going to move out now to to um, to the uh, Olympic Stadium, as you obviously we all know. Um, so it's a bit of a wrench, I think, for most of my pals. Um, they're not looking forward to it, but I suppose things move, things change, move on. All my pals are West Ham supporters, and uh, you know, um, a bit sad to go. Um, and uh, you know, it's a shame, really, that, that this got to happen. I know it's, um, you know, I don't know what this Olympic Stadium is going to bring us in in ten years' time. To be fair, I don't think anyone does. There's so much going on there. It's not just a football ground. It's it's commercial. It's, resi- it's residential. You know, lots of going to be lots of flats there and around the building. You know, I don't know how it's going to finish up the area. Hopefully, it's looked after, but um, only time will tell. But um, you know, I just hope we don't lose the atmosphere of, a, of an enclosed ground, which I think West Ham supporters have always been used to. You know, and you know, obviously the kids who've been who've come through uh, uh, over the years with their parents to the games would. You know, I'm sure they'd they'd, they'd love to try and keep the tradition of a sort of a a tight knitted ground but you know it's a different kettle of fish there so we have to see what, what you know all goes on as part of a mixture i think west ham do tick some boxes they bring the high profile of a premier league club there that will in turn have an effect on the naming rights for the stadium because of the exposure of their games but you know we had the most wonderful experience in my lifetime in london in the 2012 olympics but it did only last a few weeks and the stadium's going to be up there for 100 years. So we've got to put the actual Olympics behind us, but concentrate on what made those Olympics so special. It was actually giving the athletes themselves the chance to fulfil their dreams and inspire others. In that context, Lake Orient comes up with another answer. The community club is one of the biggest community schemes in the whole country. A Community Club of the Year recipient award winner a history of 132 years, endangered by a giant, where the entrance to the Olympic Park is but 750 yards away from Lake Norrin's front doorstep, with a giant that says they're going to give away free 10 to 15,000 tickets every week. Common sense says that is the beginning of the end for Lake Norrin. Now, is the legacy, this Olympic legacy, going to be putting a small community club out of business. And that's what we're gambling with, and that's why we're fighting so hard. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a changing area from what it was when I grew up there. Now it's probably one of the big, biggest Asian communities in, uh, in Europe, you know, the Green Street and everything else. So, yeah. you know, I don't know whether the interest in football will remain in that area so much. You know, the only concern that I had all along was it. Uh, I'm not in favour of football stadiums with athletics tracks around them. I just find it's it's not where I want to watch football. So hopefully they're going to they'll do something about that. They'll shift the sheet, seats in or whatever, and it'll make fun. You know, whether they, you'll ever be able to recre- recreate the atmosphere that Upton Park had, I, I'm not so sure because that was special, tight little stadium, fantastic. Plenty of old dockers there, plenty of Cockney characters, but. You know, time moves on and hopefully it'll be a big success at the new stadium. I think, uh, you know, the first thing that I would always say is that I don't want West Ham to leave Upton Park. The bowling ground is, to give it to you, it's, it's correct title. I, I don't think any West Ham fan in in a normal state of mind would say that they want to leave the ground. I don't, you know, I've already spoke about the memories and everything. Um, the history that's there as a fan and as a player. So, like the last thing I want to do is to leave uh, West Ham, you know, leave the ground. But I want the club to progress. Um, I think there's a great opportunity there for West Ham. 
Um, I must admit, I'm really, really disappointed that there wasn't more forethought put in before the Olympics in with regards to making it a football stadium. I think um, you know they built a stadium for athletics, which was fantastic. We all know how good the Olympics was, and you know, really place for London and Seb Coe and everyone involved. That you know they've done such a great job. But I find it embarrassing that they didn't think about what was going to happen afterwards. Uh, and as a result, I think West Ham have had to pick up the pieces. Um, there's been a lot of stick about the sort of the, the amount of money they've been given and grants and loans and everything. But that's not West Ham's fault. You know that should have all been done before. They should have, you know, organised everything. Perhaps you know the the opportunity of a, a ground share with Leighton Orient could have been dis- all this could have been done beforehand. And you know that once the Olympics is finished, the, you know the Olympics move out and the football moves in, like what happened at Man City's ground, which we all know was should have been the way forward. So I find that disappointing. Um, but having said that, I think it's it's a great opportunity for the for the club to try and try and move on to the next level and try and compete. You know, I've only seen the initial plans. I think they're sort of you know going to try and keep the centre circle, something along those lines, and and then they're going to have the, the new streets that will be created will be Bobby Moore, Jeff first, Trevor Brook, and etc. Which is quite right and how it should be. And you know, I think it's important that once the ground's pulled down, I'd like to see the fans given every opportunity to purchase whatever they want, whether it's a floodlight, a seat, or a I don't know whatever there is that that's going to be available. You know, I'd like the fans to be given that opportunity because you know everyone's got something special or something. They you know whether it's just your seat you sat in for the last fifteen years, whatever. So I'd like to see that happen. But it's important to respect and remember all the great memories that went on there. You know, we all know it's going to be you know a housing estate, maybe a supermarket around the corner, etc. We all know that, but. You know that's progress, and that's what's going to happen. I think Arsenal done a great job when they left Highbury, and you know they left a legacy there. And I hope West Ham will do the same as well. You know when I sort of have a discussion with fans, and you know let's be honest, it's probably split fifty-fifty. I think you know half don't want to go, and half are probably getting their head round it now. And you know I think you know there's no doubt West Ham will go there. It's not ifs, buts, where it they it will happen, and it is going to happen. So you might as well try and embrace it. My argument to any fan, and you know I've had a few sort of gentle arguments with fans is that I'm fed up with West Ham being an also run club or also ran club probably is the, the term you know we, you know, we haven't won anything for 34 years since 1980 mm. alright there's been cup finals etc along the way I understand all that but you know why can't West Ham win an FA Cup we're going to win one you know why, well, why can't why can't we win the FA Cup um, you know look at the League Cup Birmingham won the League Cup you know, um, I think Portsmouth won the FA Cup, didn't they? You know, so why can't West Ham win the FA Cup? Um, I, 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 I think that Tottenham have have moved on in terms of building a fantastic training ground. They they've got plans for a wonderful new ground at White Hart Lane, and good luck to them. Arsenal, we've already discussed. You know, fantastic training ground. Left Highbury and gone to the Emirates. Brilliant. Chelsea have got a wonderful training ground and. You know, if they had the opportunity tomorrow, they'd go and move to a 70,000 all seater stadium if they could find somewhere. So, you know, I, I want West Ham to be competing with those three clubs. I don't want West Ham competing with QPR and Charlton and, and whoever else there might be that you think of, Watford, whatever. No disrespect to those clubs. But I, I, I look at West Ham as a club that can compete with those three teams I mentioned. We, I, we, we sponsored a, an independent inquiry into the effects of the Olympic Stadium on Leighton Orient. It uh, cost us £30,000, but I think it was the best £30,000 I've ever spent because it highlighted the key issues. A big club giving away tickets in our catchment area obviously will have an adverse effect on us. We don't believe it will adversely affect the hardcore Leighton Orient supporters, but we are aware through precedent over a number of years but we lose three or four hundred season tickets a year by natural wastage. Those will not... Currently, they're being replaced. They will not be replaced when West Ham are giving away tickets to watch Premiership football on our doorstep. Because we operate under the Football League 60% rule in relationship to players' wages and the available funds to cover those wages, if our income falls, so does our available spend on players fall. And over a period of time, and it won't be over one year or two years, but certainly over five to seven, the detrimental effect on Lake Norwood will inevitably involve slipping down the leagues and potentially going out of business. You know, they're going to get more people in, 54,000 people from straight away. They'll have more corporate, more sponsorship, grand naming rights, whatever it is that's going to come in. Brings more money into the club. You then need 
the right manager to bring in the right players and then you then take your chances and try and move on. So uh, I think it's, it potentially could be a great move. Um, in 50 years' time, there'll be a couple of generations, probably six, my, my son's kids, sixth and seventh generation, who won't even know that there was a bowling ground. All they'll know is the Olympic Stadium, and that, unfortunately, is how life evolves. And the same with Arsenal fans now. They're, they're, they're gonna, they won't even know there was Ireland, but it'll just be the Emirates, and that's what it is. It's the modern-day... Football. As we all know, you, you try and go to West Ham on a match day, I mean, it holds, what, 35,000, and it's like a nightmare getting in, it's a nightmare getting out, there's traffic and congestion everywhere, and it's, it's, it's just a nightmare to get to. In Stratford, you've got the best connected rail station in Europe, and I think, you know, when the fans get their heads around it, and, and they all then start coming in, whether they're coming from north, south, east, west, it doesn't matter. You will be able to get to the stadium, you, uh, to the station. You can then have a nice little walk to the ground. Once you get inside that ground, you're gonna you're gonna have um, a fantastic facility. I said to West Ham right at the start. I said I will only back this on two conditions. I said the first one is that um, I, I don't want the atmosphere being lost because we we spoke about the special atmosphere created at the bowling ground, and, and I said like the way things are, I can't see how the atmosphere is going to be there. The, the roof didn't even cover the, the supporters at the Olympics. So, you know, they're building the biggest cantilever roof in Europe and once that's enclosed, the atmosphere will stay within the stadium, which is great. That was the first condition, which, uh, you know, that was met by the club. And I'm not saying they've done it because of me. I'm just saying I wanted to know the answers to the questions. And the second one was I didn't want a running track around the football field. I think we've seen historically in Europe it, it doesn't work. There's been many, many teams who've played... Munich being one of them, uh, you know, and, and it doesn't work. It's, you know, athletics is a great sport and it's for athletics. Football's football and, you know, the plans I've seen with the retractable seats coming in for football on all four sides of the stadium will make it, you know, that the fans aren't that much further away from than what they actually are at the moment at the bowling ground. So, you know, once I saw the plans for those two things, then, you know, I was satisfied that the club had done the best they could. Like I say, it shouldn't have had to have come to that because it should all have been done. 10, 12 years ago, but West Ham are dealing with what they're dealing with. Clearly, the Olympic Stadium is an iconic London building now. It's going to be the centre of attraction in the East End of London. It's going to attract a lot of football fans and non-football fans to that area. It will also have a huge amount of benefit on the surrounding areas, whether you're a taxi driver, a restaurant, a pub. You're going to get business from people, just the traffic that this will generate. From Lake Norwich's standpoint... We have, on the one side, the very real, well, the really real chance of going out of business, so we have to do something. If we move into the Olympic Stadium, it's not without its problems. You know, we would take the lower tier, which is 18,000 tickets. Our current average gate is probably around 5,500. So we, too, have got to look to the community to give away tickets to kids under 18, members of the armed forces, old age pensioners. We've got to work our socks off to fill the 18,000 and it will help if we can make championship football rather than first division football because the over the visiting crowds the visitors when you look down your fixtures and say which games will I go to this year there's hardly a football fan that won't pick the Olympic Stadium to go to so for us in the same way as the Olympic athletes in 2012 this is actually a chance for us to achieve our dreams as well a new start an iconic building, the opportunity to expand to areas above our station, if you like, or where we've been used to being. It will focus, and I believe we can create a story within the local community. People like supporting the underdog. We've been the underdog for 132 years, I, and it won't change. But it is the dawn, potentially the dawn of a new era for Lake Norwich Football Club, and that has enormous benefits to the community that we service. Well, it's, it's, I, I kind of get excited about something that I've, uh, I don't know is going to happen. Or, or I'm, I'm in charge of the football side of the football club, and if we're to play here for the next 20 years and I'm the manager for the next 20 years, then I'm more than happy with that. If it means we shift to the Olympic Stadium for the next uh, 20 years, I'm the manager, then I'm happy with that. At the moment, we're laying 10th, 11th in the league. I'd have settled for that at the start of the season. We're not playing great football, no we're not. But we went down playing tippy-tappy football because we didn't have the players. Even when we did have the players, it wasn't doing us any favours. So I think they've been a bit hard on Sam Allardyce. Um, he's come in and done a job. 
there and he's kind of trying to keep us there and, and make sure we're going to be strong we've had a bad start of the season with injuries we had no defenders we had no attackers we, in fact we didn't have a fucking team so what chance you got you know uh, and now they're coming back it's almost like the start of a season with us. we had a terrible game the other night where they were diabolical or probably the worst game you've ever seen in your life but we won 2-1 in them games we never used to win 2-1 you know, we'd always get done. We, we we found ourselves, we were winning games in the last minute where we used to always get done. Now, let's get that, that there. Let's build on that. And then we can start playing football again, you know. I've got so many memories from Upton Park. But I think football's changed. Not always for the better. I love the old days. I love the old watching Brooklyn and Devonshire. McAvenny. Joey Cole. You know, I mean... You think of the players we had, but Lamp, a young Lamp, oh, when he was there, I know they have a go at yeah, the young Frank. He made the big mistake of kissing his Chelsea badge. He should never have done that. It doesn't matter what he thinks of, you know, the, the people that run the club at the time, but don't take that on the support of people who supported it, you know. Um, but that's another thing, Paolo Di Canio. These, we, we've had... I've had wonderful times over there. I've seen Bobby Moore play the Jeff first, Martin Peters, you know. Uh, I can think back that far, you know. Um... But I think in this day and age where football's changing, and I, you know, but sometimes it bores the life out of me, football. You know, bores the life out of me now. But I think to go on as a club, don't forget, we're not a rich club, we're not a wealthy club. You know, people are screaming out to have so-and-so pay footballers, we ain't got that money. But I think it will up us. It's going to, for the future, if we go to the Olympic Stadium, that might attract them kind of players. It might attract that sort of money to our club. And if we want to survive, if you want to be in the Premiership, I think you've got to go there. If you're happy to be in the Championship or the, or the First Division, Second Division, which I don't mind, as long as my team still survives, I'll have that. I'll take it all day long. I'll stay at Upton Park. But I think by staying at Upton Park, we have no future in the Premiership. Well, there are lots of moves, potential moves, but I find the remaining moves are destructive rather than constructive. I mean, I think a lodge an appeal with the European courts... Uh, on state sponsorship, for example, of the West Ham deal, as opposed to the cost of the taxpayer, would be very difficult to oppose. But I don't think that achieves anything. What I want is everyone to sit around the table and work out, to the benefit of everyone, to West Ham, to Lake Orient, to football in general, to the community, most importantly to the legacy of the Olympic Stadium, I want people to discuss and say, let's try and just be sensible about this. There's no brownie points here. Lake Norrent do West Ham no harm whatsoever by sharing. There's plenty of West Ham supporters and there's plenty of Lake Norrent supporters that don't want to go to the Olympic Stadium. They remember that their grandfather sat there and his father before him. And I'm very aware of these feelings. But we have to move with the times. We have to make the most of government assets, if you like, state-sponsored assets. We have to show that we are capable of improving. We have to show there is a future at a higher level. And that applies both to West Ham and to Lake Norium. So for us now, it's not a question of sitting back and waiting. It's a question of make sure we're con constantly petitioning people to understand the issues that are at stake, to understand the downside if we go one way and the potential upside if we go the other. It's a question for people to put aside petty differences and actually look at the bigger picture. There is £600 million of taxpayers' money in this stadium. We all of us have an obligation to the taxpayer to make a return to the government on that investment. And I think we have the way forward, and I'm sure ultimately we will be successful.